Theater 5 presents The Victim. three blocks, I've always been anxious about them. When I saw the crowd, the police car, I, I hesitated. Not sure I wanted to know what had happened. But I finally went over. I wouldn't go any closer if I were you, Miss. What? I, I said I don't think I'd go any closer. It's not pretty. Oh. oh. What was it, an accident? No, a mugging. She was killed. Did you say killed? Yes. That's why I don't know why they call them muggings. Seems to me that they're... All right, all right, now break it up, break it up. Get moving. Let that ambulance through. Did you hear me? I said, get moving. There's nothing more to see. Come on, come on. Come on. You all right, miss? You look... I guess I am a little shook up. I mean, you know about these things. You know that they happen, but... When you actually... Yes. Uh, do you live far from here? Just a few blocks over toward the park. Would you like me to see you home? That's awfully nice of you, but I... Oh, I wouldn't suggest it, except that you do look quite upset. Or uh, perhaps you'd like me to get you a cab. With all the police around, I, I don't think that's necessary. Especially if... Are you sure you don't mind? Not at all. Uh, this way? Yes. Oh, these streets. Even the cab drivers don't like coming through here. I know. The street lights broken half the time. What were you saying about the police? About not knowing why they call them mugging? Well, in the first place, I gather that all the victims so far have been women. Yes, the ones I heard about were. Well, if whoever attacked them was just after money, why hasn't he gone after any men? Men usually have more money on them than women. Well, that's true. But I should think a woman would be easier. Normally, they wouldn't resist. I know I wouldn't. I mean, if someone grabbed my purse, I'd let him have it. Oh, that's the second reason. I think there's something strange about it. Uh, why should it have been necessary to kill them? You mean you think... Well, even though money was taken, I don't think that's why women were attacked. I think they were attacked because they were women. But that makes it even more frightening. I mean, well, it, it was bad enough before just knowing about the incidents, but... Oh... Don't the police have any leads at all? I don't know. I'm sure they're working on it and that they've brought more men into the district, but... Is this where you live? Yes. Oh, I'm glad it's a house with a doorman. I worry about women who live in places where there's no protection. Oh, it would worry me terribly. Thank you very much for walking me home, Mr... Uh, Borden. Well, uh, good night. <laughs> I waited till he was around the corner. Then I went back to where I really live. Three houses away. Well, I, I did run into him again, a number of times. At the newsstand, at the supermarket, and then the dry cleaners. He was very nice. Walked me home a few times. Then, one evening, when I was leaving the neighborhood movie theater, he again walked me home. And since the films had been old horror pictures, it was especially pleasant. What did you think of the films, Doris? Well, of course, I've seen them before, several times. I like them. What about you? Oh, I've seen them before, too, and actually, I don't know why I went again. Because I find them quite disturbing. Scary, you mean? No. No one could take them that seriously. I, I think what I object to is the point of view. The exploitation of violence for its own sake. Oh, I suppose there is something wrong with that. On the other hand, I think we all like being scared, just a little bit at least. And I'd rather be scared by a vampire or a living mummy in a film than by our friend the mugger. Yes, but don't you think there's a relationship between the two? I mean, when you start playing up violence, being so graphic about stranglings and stabbings... That... Well, why are you stopping here? Because this is where I live. Well, 
I, I thought you lived in the apartment house on the corner. Every time I've walked you home before... I know. Whenever I come home in a cab or with someone I don't know very well, I, I have them drop me off there. And the doorman walks me back here, sees me in safely. Oh, I see. Well, that's very sensible of you. As I told you, I worry about women who live in brownstones like this without any protection. But you certainly seem able to take care of yourself. I try to. Well, it was very pleasant running into you again. I, I always enjoy talking to you. I enjoy it, too. Would you like to come in for a few minutes? Have some coffee? Well, uh, that's a very nice idea, but uh, are you sure it's not too late? Oh, quite sure. After all, tomorrow's Saturday. Well, in that case, thank you. I'd like that very much. Some more coffee? Uh, maybe just a little. It's very good. Yeah, that's fine. A cigarette? No, thanks. Oh, I keep forgetting you don't smoke. Well, it's one of my few vices. And luxuries. Luxury? Well, I started smoking these about a year ago. They're Turkish. Special blend. Now I can't smoke anything else. I like them. The way they smell, I mean. <laughs> yeah, and I like your place. You don't get rooms this size in the new buildings. No. I wasn't too sure about it when I first moved in. I mean, a basement apartment. But since it's in the back, it's quiet. And of course, I have a garden, too. Ah, during the summer, I, I keep that door open. Oh, that must be very pleasant. You live here alone? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I did have a roommate, but she got married about a month ago. But uh, it, it doesn't make you anxious being here all alone? No, not really. The Johnsons, who own the building, live right upstairs, and well, they've always kept an eye on me. Uh-huh. Mr. Johnson's told me that if I ever have any trouble or if I do feel anxious, all I have to do is knock on the radiator and he'll be right down. Well, uh -huh. that must be reassuring. Oh, it is. Except over the weekends. The weekends? Yes, they have a place in the country. Go up there then. Ah. Oh. Well, that means uh, they must be away. Well. Probably. Mr. Johnson usually comes down and tells me when they're leaving. Well, it sounds like an ideal arrangement. Oh, it is. There's still the problem of getting home here, of course. That sometimes worries me. I've been thinking about what you said the last time I saw you. About how they weren't really muggings and... I, I wasn't sure I understood it. I mean, I know there are men who have a thing about women. Hate them enough to want to kill them. Jack the Ripper, for instance. But I, I was never very clear about why. Yes, well, it's, it's not a very pleasant subject. Why are you so interested in it? Oh... Huh? With that monster walking the streets around here. Can't you see how I would be? Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, well, I've been interested in him, too, but I don't think he's hard to understand. Obviously, he's a sick man. Very sick. Yes, but if he's that sick, wouldn't anyone who knew him even let him be able to tell it? No, because feelings as violent as that usually... Well, they usually develop slowly and remain hidden. First time he did attack a woman, it was probably an accident. A sudden rage because of something she said or did. But afterwards, the need, the compulsion, would become more intense. And, well, he'd start looking for a chance to kill under what he'd consider ideal circumstances. What do you mean by ideal circumstances? Well, now, don't forget that up to now, he's had to kill at random, hurriedly, on the street. But... Suppose he found himself in a situation where he'd have to hurry. Could take his time. What do you think he'd do? Do you really want to know? No, I don't. I think you do. And I think he'd probably begin choking his victim. <laughs> like this. No! Turn to the victim in a moment. The 
knocking must have helped bring me to. Because it was the first thing I remembered hearing. I opened my eyes. I was lying on the couch and I was alone. He was gone. Then when the knocking came again. Who is it? Dick Johnson, Doris. Oh, just a second. All right. You weren't it. Doris, what's wrong? A man. There was a man here. A man? He tried to choke me. Kill me. Well, come on over here and sit down. Hello, operator. Get me the police. Anything, Mike? All right. Keep looking. Cover all the backyard, huh? I'll be in here. Oh, uh, Miss Summers? Yes? I'm Conroy, 22nd Precinct. Who's this? My name's Johnson. I own this building. I live upstairs. Oh, yes. You put in the call. Well, now, will you tell me exactly what happened, Miss Summers? I'll try. I guess it really began about a week ago when I was coming home. His name was Borden. That's what he said. I don't know if it really was. First name? He never told me. Can you describe him? He's about 30, 35, tall, about six feet. Hmm. Nice looking. He was wearing a tweed jacket and slacks and and seemed quite cultured, talked well. What made you invite him in here? Well, I I didn't feel he was exactly a stranger anymore. He'd been very considerate and polite, walking me home a, a number of times, so... Well, I thought the least I could do would be to offer him some coffee. Oh, did you, uh, you both have coffee? Yes. Is this your cup here? I guess so. Why? Well, where's his cup? What do you mean? Well, this must be yours. There's lipstick on it, but I don't see any other cup. Well, it must be around someplace. He had two cups of it. He was sitting right there smoking and... Smoking? Yes. Well, now, which ashtray did he use? Why, this one right here. I don't smoke myself, and so I only have... There are no ashes in it. Or a cigarette butt. But he did smoke. At least two or three cigarettes. He even talked about it. The the fact that he smokes a special Turkish kind... Wait a minute. Do you think I made this whole thing up, imagined it? Why, no, Miss Summers, of course not. Just that, uh... Well, did you hear anything, Mr. Johnson? Mm. A scream, sounds of a struggle, anything like that? No, no, I didn't. Well, what made you come down here, then? Knock on the door. Well... My wife and I do worry about Miss Summers, especially since her roommate got married and she's been alone. We were about to leave for our place in the country. We usually leave much earlier. I saw that her light was on, so I came down to tell her we were going. But you didn't hear or see anything? No. I suppose... Well, if my knocking scared him, he could have gotten away through the backyard. Oh, I've got men out there now checking. How long were you at the door? Oh... At least a couple of minutes. I, I knocked a few times. As a matter of fact, I, I thought she was asleep. was about to give up when... Were you asleep, Miss Summers? No, of course not. I told you, I passed out when he started choking oh, me. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll we'll get on this right away. Check our files and send out this board and description. By the way, in the uh, meantime, do you have any friends? Anyone you could stay with for a few days? No, I haven't. Well, then maybe you should go to a hotel. Why? Because... Well, after all, you did have a pretty frightening experience. But you don't think I have. I didn't say that. But that's what you think. Where's his cup, his cigarette ashes? Was I asleep? I was just trying to get the facts, Miss Summers. But even if I didn't believe you, I still wouldn't want you to stay here alone. Not right now. Why not? Because, well, we haven't wanted to talk about this, but we're convinced now that these recent incidents weren't muggings. We think they were deliberate, calculated murders. The work of a psychotic. And the psychiatrist that we've called in agreed with us. And the... Well, they've not only given us a rundown on the men involved, but they pointed out there are certain types of women who are natural victims in this kind of attack. Seem almost to... to attract this sort of killer. Hysterical women, you mean, who imagine things. Women who secretly want to be attacked. Now, please, Miss Summers. I didn't say that either. And if I've upset you or made you angry, I'm sorry. But, well, the way things are, I am worried about you. That's why I wish you wouldn't stay here alone. Not for the next few days, anyway. Well, I don't have any friends to stay with, and I'm not going to a hotel. Well, then what about uh, coming to the country with us, Doris? I've got an important appointment up there tomorrow, so we've got to go. But uh, we've got plenty of room. Thank you, no, Mr. Johnson. But you can... I said no. After all, if I imagine the whole thing, there's nothing to be concerned about. But now, if you don't mind, I'd like you both to go. I'm very tired. All right, Miss Summers. 
If you insist on staying home, I'm going to send a policeman over to keep an eye on the place. In the meantime, here's my number at the precinct. Now, if you should happen to see this boarding character again... Thank you, Mr. Conroy. Good night. I don't know how long I sat there after they left. Going over it and over it. Trying to decide if there was something wrong with me. And I had imagined the whole thing. If I had, then I really was sick. And I should do something about it. But if I hadn't imagined it... Why weren't there any signs that Borden had been there? Well, finally, I gave up. I had a terrible headache by then. I went into the bathroom and took some aspirin. I was about to leave when... when I saw something on the floor behind the laundry hamper. I bent down, picked it up, and it was a cigarette butt, cork tipped and oval. I looked at it for a minute and then hurried to the phone. Doris Summers. Summers? Oh, yes, yes, Miss Summers. Oh, if you're calling about the uh, patrolman I said I'd send over. I just got in. I haven't had a chance to do anything about it yet. Well, that's not why I'm calling. I just found something I think you'll be interested in. What's that? A cigarette butt. Oh? But not just the ordinary one. It's a special Turkish one. The kind I told you Borden smoked. Where'd you find it? In the bathroom behind the laundry hamper. It must have fallen there when he was emptying the ashtray. Emptying it? Don't you see that that's what he must have done? When he heard Mr. Johnson at the door, he emptied it in the bathroom and also put his cup and saucer away. But why? So that you think exactly what you did think, that I had either made up or imagined the whole thing. Oh, take a pretty cruel customer to come up with that one. On the other hand, well, why not? It may take him a minute or two. Then you do believe me? Of course, especially if you've got that cigarette butt. Okay, Miss Summers, you sit tight. I'll be right over. I put down the phone. And suddenly I was terrified. I'm not sure why. After all, it was all over now. Conroy did believe me, and he'd be here in a few minutes. See that I was protected until they did catch Borden. But was that why I was so frightened? Because now I knew that it really had happened. I don't know. I just knew that I stood there shaking like a leaf and watching the clock, wishing he'd hurry. And then... Is that you, Mr. Conroy? Yes. Just a second. Well, thank heaven you're here. I was beginning to... You! Yes, Miss Summers. What? What do you want? Why did you come back? Because in your own strange way, I think you wanted me to. You're mad! I suppose I am. Do you mind if I close this door? Keep away from me. The Johnsons are upstairs, and if I scream... It won't make any difference, because they're not upstairs. They just left. I waited outside until they did. The police are coming. I just called them, and they'll be here any minute. I don't believe you. You're just saying that. It's true. I found one of your cigarette butts in the bathroom. I wish you hadn't done that called them, because now it'll be like all the other times. What do you mean? I mean, I'll have to hurry! Technician Ed Blaney, script editor Jack C. Wilson, original music by Alexander Blostovsenko, orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. 